My name is Sam Vakni. I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. Dancers are thinly disguised simulations of sex acts. But there's more to dancing than body ribaldry. The sweaty proximity allows the partners to exchange an enormous amount of information about their respective bodies, from joint suppleness, through spatial orientation and coordination, and down to the fine details of their immunological systems. These de- details are carried in body odors embedded in the sweat and are known as the major histocompatibility complex, or MHC. In this sense, dancing aids and abets the forces of natural selection and eugenic breeding. Indeed, in many 16th and 17th century textbooks, dancing is grouped with hunting, fighting, wrestling, and running, not exactly romantic pursuits. In times past, the dance hall was the only venue open to prospective partners to gather such fitness data. Indeed, there is reason to believe that dancing was consciously invented and designed to do precisely that. Capoyol, a protagonist in Arbeau's dance manual, Orchestography, complains, without knowledge of dancing, I could not please the damsels. Arbeau himself is nothing if not brutally explicit in his book. He says, dancing is practiced to reveal what lovers and whether lovers are in good health and sound of limb after which they are permitted to kiss their mistresses in order that they may touch and savor each other, thus to ascertain if they are shapely or emit an unpleasant odor as of bad meat. Arbo and dance masters such as Caruso actually named dances to reflect the underlying amorous matchmaking process. Inevitably, Puritans and other spoiled sports targeted the practice and its purveyors repeatedly in both England and overseas colonies. But dancing as a form of health-enhancing strenuous exercise also serves to perpetuate the species. This aspect of dancing was especially important when and where women's movements were restricted by tradition, social mores and religion. Allowed to indulge in dances even with their own sex, women have thus secured a modicum of sanatory locomotion. Nowadays, dancing is often thought of as a couple's activity, but this is a very recent development. Until the 19th century, dancing was a social act. The vast majority of dancers involved frequently switched multiple partners as demanded by ballroom etiquette. Thus, dancing and saltation yielded social cohesion, increased social interaction, and enhanced the opportunities for mating and cooperation.